Hi, everyone. Hope you're enjoying On Your Fast so far. Thank you for joining my On Your Fast session, Subculture Rendering and Calculations in Mongear Star Dive. My name is Hyungu Kim, and you can call me Michael, and I'll be your speaker today. I'm currently working as a technical artist and visual enhancement tech task force leader at Nemabur Monster. I've contributed to projects such as Samurai Jack, Better Through Time from Other Swim, Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker from Bandai Namco, and Grand Saga, and more. I work across four areas as a technical artist, a computer graphics engineer, on client-side system, mainly gameplay and action logics, and on VFX. In today's session, I will walk you through several rendering techniques I developed during the Mongil Star Dive project, which is built on a deferred rendering pipeline. Before we begin this session, I will introduce you about the meaning of the words of culture. The words of culture that I will use in this presentation is commonly used word in Korean games and are characterized by a Japanese anime-inspired art style, a strong emphasis on narrative, and fo a focus on collectible, character-centered gameplay. These games often foster tight-knit communities that form and grow organically around the game itself. Here's what I be uh, covering, covering today. GGX render equations for subculture rendering, bit separations, and SDF shadow projection, environment, and light enhancement. I think most of you already know the difference between forward and difference rendering pipelines, but I briefly introduced them for better understanding in the context of my presentation. Forward rendering is object based it collects and renders each object separately, writing directly to the frame buffer and composing them one by one. On the other hand, deferred rendering is more of a collective method. It gathers the necessary information for rendering the entire scene into a G buffer and then renders everything at once in a later pass. The rendering pipeline for this project is based on a deferred rendering architecture. Deferred rendering architecture has both advantages and disadvantages. And addressing those disadvantages becomes one of the key tasks to overcome. So the first agenda, GGX equations in diffuse term. One of the key challenges in physically based rendering especially in a subculture style project featuring many toon stylized animation inspired hearings is the high risk of falling into the uncanny valley. If the style leans too heavily toward realism, it can become unsettling or unnat unnatural. On the other hand, if it's too stylized or toon like, it risks becoming overly simplistic and losing artistic depth. So what I needed to do was take the strength of realistic rendering like accurate light behavior and surface interaction, and reinterpret them through a stylized, tune-oriented framework, which means the rendering style and light calculation I was aiming for lies somewhere between realism and tune. If I use standard, physically basic based rendering, the character's appearance would look somewhat unnatural and falling into uncanny, uncanny valley. So I had to create a custom rendering approach that could deliver a more aesthetically rich and stylized result. The original PBR rendering was unsuitable for the project due to those reasons. However, by combining all the, nece the necessary inform equations in the pre-pass to create a stylized aperture rendering, and then adjusting the values in the post-processing step, I was able to achieve a balanced and visually rich result. Within the rendering equation, several sub-equations are used to achieve aesthetically pleasing results, such as GGX equations, spherical harmonics, and microfacet distributions. 
Some of these are used in their entirety, while others are selectively applied through specific components. So this is one of that equations, which is the GGX equation. If you're a computer graphics engineer or a technical artist, you might be already familiar with it. It's also implemented in Unreal Engine, and the original purpose of this equation is to achieve high fidelity lighting calculations by using a lightweight and efficient method. Specifically, it focuses on the specular components of the lighting, including microfacet calculations. But I'm not here to explain how the GGX equation works in detail or how each component functions. That's not the purpose of this presentation. There are plenty of physics and computer graphics resources out there if you're interested in a deeper understanding. Instead, today I want to show you how the GGX equation can be applied in subculture style rendering and explore its potential to deliver high fidelity performance optimized visual suited for stylized aesthetics. So my initial thought was that what if I applied it to diffuse calculations instead? Since the equation is fundamentally about modeling light behavior accurately, I wondered if I could modify it and add some extra steps to achieve the visual result I was aiming for. To do that, I needed to identify where the modification should begin. And if you look at the terms above, they focus on the normal distribution on the light. And that's where I started altering the equation. Since the base equation already produced high fidelity specular reflection, my idea was that by expanding it, I could also represent smooth diffuse surfaces at relatively low computational cost. Another challenge was that the original equation only accounted for positive light direction, so I modified it to also handle the negative components of lighting calculations, essentially can capturing light behavior from behind the surface as well. Spherical harmonics is another commonly used equation in computer graphics, primarily for representing light based on its directionality. Lower order harmonics require very, very little uh, computational power, but can only express low fidelity results. Higher order harmonics offer greater fidelity, but comes at a much higher performance cost. What I realized is that if I selectively use only the components I need for the, the equation, I can achieve the desired visual quality with much lower computational cost without relying on full expensive calculations. For example, imagine a sphere generating a light image using a spherical harmonics terms like L to M0. Like in it would, be, it would produce a simple basic lighting result, like image in the middle left of the current page. But if you add a higher frequency term like L3 and M-3, the result becomes smoother and more aesthetically pleasing. And add, adding even more terms can further enhance the lighting quality, giving you a richer and more stylized look. Finally, by combining all these equations, along with several parameters to control their strengths and proportions, you can shape the results you to match the style you are aiming for. While it may sound like an exaggeration, but with this approach, you can deliver significantly better visual results than standard physically based rendering and especially when targeting a specific art, artistic style, like a tune style or like subculture styles. In this chapter, I will, tackle, uh, I will talk about how modified an isotropic GGX equation in specular term was used for subculture rendering. 
The reason I choose an isotropic GGX in the subculture rendering is because simple specular equation couldn't deliver the artistic style I was aiming for. So I had to explore beyond the standard approach and start modifying the equation to better suit the visual identity I wanted to achieve. The standard N.H equation will only pre present typical, not interesting result in reflection. But modified GGX can perform various different, different shapes, and by combining more equations, I could have achieved more divergence in specular reflections. So subculture anisotropic GGX calculation will be formed with anisotropic bending distortion plus normal distribution equations and etc. By combining those values smoothly, I could achieve the result I wanted. With these new specular combinations, I was able to achieve a variety of expressive specular reflections and shape them more freely to match the desired look. Finally, produced GGX specular light can be performed perfect specular light shape for subculture animation style game artistically. In this chapter, I'll explain bit separation techniques for more efficient texture usage in deferred rendering. As I mentioned earlier in this presentation, this project is based on deferred rendering, which comes with certain limitations, especially in texture usage within the G-buffer. To overcome this limitation, I had to find an alternative way to use textures without making heavy modifications to the rendering pipeline. The basic concept is split the bit usage within a single texture to store two sets of data. This allows me to pack more information into the G buffer without the need for tedious work or increasing the number of G buffer texture. For example, a 16 bit texture consists of 16 binary digits, each being either 0 or 1. If we use all 16 bits for a single value, we can represent up to 65,536 levels of precision. But in many cases, we don't need that much. Instead, we can split the 16 bits to store multiple types of data. For example, by dividing it into 8-bit segments, we can store two values with 200, five, uh, 256 levels each. Or if we split it into 1-bit and 15-bit, we can store one Boolean flag and another value with 32,768 levels of that. In this way, we can make more efficient use of G-buffer storage without increasing memory usage or adding extra textures. In the next chapter, we'll talk about SDF, sign distance field, and shadow projection. The reason we use SDF, sign distance field, is that Physically accurate shadow calculation often fail to produce aesthetically pleasing results, on stylized character faces especially. This is because uh, character models, especially faces, tend to have complex depth, while the shadows we want are usually flatter and more tune-like. To solve this, I added SDF-based shadow projection specifically to the character's faces allowing for clean, stylized shadow that better match the intended visual style. Many of you are probably familiar with how SDF works, but I'll briefly go over it for better context. The, the, 
The idea is to prepare textures that represent the shadow intensity across the character's face, essentially capturing how much shadow each area should receive. Then we compress this data into a single texture, similar to how a height map works. Then by reading and projecting the shadow intensity based on the face normal and light direction, we are able to achieve smooth and stylized SDF based facial shadows. So the result looks like this. And since we are using a deferred rendering pipeline, we needed to combine this SDF shadow with the physically based shadow calculations. After merging the two, we get a stylized yet visually consistent shadow, even in areas where standard shadows would typically break down. In the final chapter, we'll take a look at additional light enhancement techniques and environment enhancements. Normally, standard point lights don't create the kind of sharp, clip-like edges seen in animation. They have natural fall-off and a smooth spread, which doesn't suit the style lights look of subculture or tune style games. So I modify the point light to have a more defined and characteristic style, as shown in this video. This new point light rendering is also highly suitable for anime style VFX. The next slide is about grass rendering in environment. Normally, grass can look dull and flat, especially when they are, there's only a small, am small amount placed in the scene. It often lacks volume and presence. To improve this, I merged the grass visually with the ground and added subtle flow and movement of light. The, this approach gives it a more natural and aesthetically rich expression that better fits the game's overall system. The flow of light through the grass depends on both the passage of time and the directional position of the directional light. Okay, that concludes everything I prepared for this session. And thank you all for listening, and I hope you find it insightful. Enjoy your rest of your day, and thank you.